Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to actually start working over this image, at least on the first tab. And what we need to know before we get started is where do we want to drive the image? Uh, I shot a lot of film and it was a Velvia film. It was a wonderful film. I knew how it would respond to pretty much any scene I'd photograph. And what I've done personally is uh, take the approach that when I shoot something now with a digital camera, when I'm processing it, I want to drive it to the same place that the Velvia film would have made it look. It was a wonderfully saturated film that really pushed the greens and blues and, and it's often a very desirable look. So I'm always trying to take my raw files and drive them to the same place that Velvia would have uh, taken my image. If you don't have a film that you used to shoot and you're, you're trying to emulate, then you're going to just experiment quite probably quite a bit more and find out what you like individually. Again, everything we're doing from here on in, this is all subjective. You're now being very, art, very artistic in what you're trying to do with the image here. So as we take a look at what we can use, we're going to use these first six tabs. The Basic tab, the Tone Curve tab, the Detail tab, the HSL tab, if we're doing a black and white, we'll use the split toning tab, and then finally we'll do some lens correction on many of our images. These last three tabs, I never use. It's always some combination of these first six. We've talked about the white balance already. Let's move on down now and talk about what's going on in the rest of this tab. When you get your image, you can simply click Auto and see what it does. Perhaps you're going to like what Auto does. It does adjust many of these settings from uh, exposure down to contrast. Uh, if you don't like what it's done, just go ahead and click Default. If you make your own adjustments in here, you can always click on Default to reset it back to their default settings. Notice uh, brightness is always at plus 50 for default, contrast at 25 for default. If you're doing a raw image, black is at 5, allowing you to make movements to lighten the blacks or darken the blacks. So each slider here moves a different component of the histogram up here. If we take the exposure and run it to the right, we're moving everything to the right. We're brightening everything. If we run it to the left, we're darkening everything. All right, if we take recovery, recovery, now let's use this image here. Recovery is working the very brightest section of our histogram. It's recovering hopefully blown out highlights. We'll watch the highlights disappear quite a bit. So from here at 100%, so it, we're going to go back to zero. It's taking out, it's recovering quite a bit of the burned out highlights. It has a limited range. I typically take mine up to, oh, about 20 is about as far as I like to see. The recovery effect sometimes may be really only 15. I try not to use recovery if I don't have to, but if there's a reason to, I will run it up a little bit. Fill light. Fill light works with our three-quarter tones. Notice most of the movement's going on right here. This top end isn't moving at all. This end is here. Again, we're sliding it all the way up. We can take that back to zero. The next tab down is black, and again, it starts off at five as default, so you can run left with it and open those up a bit. Not much, but you can go far to the right, and again, look on the histogram. We're working in the very far left, the dark, the blacks. We'll take back, that back to five. Brightness, we'll watch the histogram. We're kind of working the overall histogram, but we're really working with the brights. We're not working, we're working in this area here the most. That's what we're shoving around working with the one one quarter tones and 50 is the default setting there contrast you know contrast is basically taking the brights and making them brighter if you go to the right you'll see how that histogram shows that more pixels are bouncing up to the dark on the left and to the light on the right 
Or if you go to the left, you're moving everything more towards the middle, you're reducing the contrast. I don't typically do much with a contrast slider. I don't find it useful. I want to apply contrast perhaps in the tone curve. The default setting for contrast is 25. Okay, the film I used to shoot, Velvia, was a very contrasty, saturated film. And our raw files come out pretty soft and muted looking, so we have to add some of that contrast. One of the approaches to add contrast is to take our histogram and stretch it out just a little bit along, along the scale here. We can start off by taking, well actually this seems a little bit cool to me, so I'm going to give it just a little bit of color temperature, a little bit warming. We'll change our color temperature up to 5200. And then we're going to take our exposure and run it to the right. Again, we're trying to stretch out that histogram. And I've got my highlight warnings on so I can see when I get too bright, I start to see it pop up over here on the fence post. So I'm going to back that back down to where it just, I don't want to burn it out. Eh, somewhere right about there looks good. There's no reason to do any highlight recovery because we've not blown out any highlights. Fill light, I don't think it needs any fill light. It might need a little darkening on the blacks because we've pulled off right up here. We've pulled off uh, the histogram a little bit, so we could shove that back, and we'll do that in a minute. But right off the bat, it just seems a little too bright now, so I'm going to take my brightness, and I'm going to bring that back to about right there. Now, if we look at my blacks, there's still a little bit of room to move them left, so we're going to run our black slider up just a little bit. Okay, now we've created a lot of contrast. We'll toggle our preview button on and off. And now the image has quite a bit more contrast, more in line with what the film would have done. Okay, let's look at the rest of this tab here. We have something called Clarity. Clarity creates more contrast in the midtones. I, uh, you'll see this used to varying degrees. I typically don't mind making my Clarity a little bit sharper. My default setting typically is 15 unless for some reason I want to do something different, but that would be highly unusual. I typically want to be right about there. Vibrance. Vibrance is saturating colors that need a little help. It does not, if the colors are already saturated, it does not shove them over the edge and make them look garish. It just gives a little bit of extra oomph to colors that need a little bit of help. I typically start off at about 35 and see if I like that. And often I'll toggle my preview on and off just to get an overall feel. I think we're proceeding down the right direction. The last slider in this tab is saturation. I do not apply saturation here. I usually wait and do my saturation in Photoshop. Okay, so let's say we're happy with this and now we want to open this up in Photoshop. Admittedly, we might go through some of these other tabs, but we're trying to give you a big picture right now and go back and show you those other tabs in the, in, in the intermediate items. You might click on this dialog block box, and we're not going to talk a lot about what these various options are. These are color spaces. Pro Photo has the largest colors available to it, so let's open up in Photoshop with the best image possible, the most information. Same here for 16-bit or 8-bit. We've got this uh, written down in the handout if you want to read about the difference between 16 and 18-bit. Or si pardon me, 8-bit and 16-bit, forgive me. Uh, we do want to choose 16-bit channel. Size. You don't want to go smaller and you don't want to go larger here. Just go ahead and have it go where there's it's not uh, sizing up or sizing down. And resolution, I work all of my adjustments at 300 uh, pixels per inch. So resolution at 300 could work for you. It may be at 240, your call on this. Sharpening, I do not do any sharpening here. Uh, and open in Photoshop a smart object. I do not work with smart objects and we would simply go OK. Now when we open the image in Photoshop, it will pop open as um, with the settings we just gave it. OK, so here it is in Photoshop, and as we can see right up here, it's a 16-bit uh, image, and the color settings are where we want them. OK, that's a quick look at the first tab.